Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. Hey, I got one thing I want to talk about before uh, we get into today's video. And I know I've already mentioned this a couple times, but when I mentioned it, I did so at the end of my videos instead of here at the beginning. So as a little test to myself, I want to mention my news here at the beginning of the video, and then we'll get into today's topic. So now you're probably wondering, what is this big news? I'm putting together my very first beekeeping book, and I want your guys' help. Let me explain. A couple months ago, some people reached out to me with this opportunity to put together this book. And we're going through the book in different stages, and right now we're at the very beginning. So we would like your help providing feedback as we go through each stages constructing the book. So what we've done is we've taken the liberty of putting together a little form that you go on and you enter your email address. You'll answer a couple beekeeping related questions and then you'll submit that. And then as updates become available on my end um, of the book, those will be sent out to everybody who wants to um, provide feedback. And as a little reward to you, anybody who provides thoughtful feedback will be mentioned and the ebook edition of the book and that will become available before the book goes to the publisher so it's a pretty neat little opportunity and i think um, what's really cool about this is really this isn't just a book wrote by me with everybody's feedback incorporated it's going to be a jc's bees community beekeeping book so what could be better than that everybody pitching in providing some feedback kind of giving some guidance to which way this book could go and the goal here would be that new beekeepers coming into the hobby um, could be very successful with this one book that everybody has pitched in and kind of helped shape so pretty neat i think in the end the book is the ultimate winner here and um, that's just a great opportunity i think for everybody so if this is something you're interested in Go down in the video description, you'll see a link there, follow that over, enter your email, enter a couple questions, and then submit that, and as updates become available, you will be notified. Thanks a lot, folks, and I won't hold you up any longer. Let's get into today's beekeeping video. So how many of you, let's be honest, how many of you were just scared by this recent cold snap that hit us? I bet there was a lot of you out there that was not expecting something like that to happen. Oh gosh, I'm not ready. I ain't got the bees up to wait, or I haven't done this, or I haven't done that. So today what I want to do is I want to talk about where you should be as far as getting your hives ready for winter. Should you be completely done in middle of October? Eh, it'd be nice to think that, but not necessarily. See, it really depends on how low we want to keep our mite count. There will be several beekeepers that will continue treating Varroa mites, um, maybe with oxalic acid, either the vapor option or the dribble option. And uh, they'll keep doing that clear up until late December, some all the way throughout the year, just depending on where they're located. But um, myself, my last treatment will probably be the first to second week of December. And then after that, the bees are on their own with the mite levels. That works out pretty well for me and it keeps the mites low enough into the early part of spring when the bees start to fly and meet with other bees and then of course the population of the mites start to climb again not to mention that the queen starts to go broody and that's where mites reproduce is in the cells with our bees so for that reason a lot of beekeepers will continue to treat right up into december so there's probably some of you out there that have a weak colony that you're kind of wondering do i combine it with another hive how do I go about that? Or do I just try and babysit it and, and get it through winter? Now, let me tell you, don't take the babysitting option. Um, what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna end up investing a lot of your work and, and time going out to add food or whatever it may be all winter long. And then one day we're gonna get a real strong cold snap and they're gonna let you down and die. So therefore you've got all that effort invested. Um, I would much rather see you go ahead and do a newspaper combined. And um, that's where you take a piece of newspaper and put between two colonies and they join themselves together. Um, I'm gonna link a video for that up here in the corner if that's something you're interested in and learning to do. And 
I do strongly encourage it if you have a weak colony right now and it's something you've already been debating, just go ahead and do it. Um, I think you'll feel better about it in a couple months um, when you're not running out to check their food stores. So one thing we're doing right now is trying to get our colonies up to weight. And I just went through all of my colonies here today. And for the most part, um, they're right where I want them to be. But I do plan in to supplement all the way through winter with the Hive Alive Fondant Patties and some Mountain Camp Method. Um, so with that being said, I guess um, what I'm trying to say here is if you're trying to get the, some weight on the colonies right now, um, we're getting cold enough nights now that the bees aren't going to forage a whole lot to the open feeder. And if they do, it's probably not going to be until the warmest part of the day. And the days are getting shorter. So their chances of putting food in the comb is getting shorter. So if you want your best, best chance for bees to gain some weight in frames, you need to have some kind of a feeder inside the colony. So when we have these colder days or wet rainy days, that way the bees are still able to store food in the comb um, and they don't have to worry about flying. So it's in your best effort right now to have a feeder inside the colony and I strongly suggest if you're feeding syrup that it's two to one. That's two parts sugar to one part water. I've had a lot of people ask me here recently what my preferred setup was to go into winter and I've got a video on that. I'm going to link it up in the corner and I've got another one on my two cents on wrapping your colony. Is it worth it to put tar paper or insulation wrap on your colonies? Well, there'd be a video up there if that's something you're interested in checking out. Um, it may not be the same opinion as yours, but I'm going to give you what I've learned from my experience. And when you watch that video, keep in mind that um, winters aren't what they used to be, at least here in Ohio. They're, they're more rain than they are snow. So take that into consideration when you watch that video. Um, now, as far as any other steps you should be taking for your bees right now, um, you would want to be getting your mouse guards on because as the weather starts to turn to crap, um, mice are going to be looking for a nice warm cozy place to invade to keep warm and dry their self so um, rabbit wire or anything of that sort stapled over the entrance um, screwed over the entrance however you want to go about it but i strongly suggest you put something over the entrance holes to keep mice from getting in um, i've had a lot of people ask about ventilated bottom boards um, do you put some kind of a block in there and close that off personally i do not I use screen bottom boards and the screens are opened year round. My thoughts are any air that comes in through the screen bottom and up across the cluster in the winter is gonna help push out any moisture out the top entrance. And I've actually witnessed it when it's really, really cold out and I see like icicles hanging out the little slot I leave at the top. Um, that tells me that the moisture is getting wicked out. Um, it's actually pretty interesting to see. It's like a little pat on the back, I guess, to say your bees are staying dry, the moisture is coming out. So besides these few steps, folks, there's not really a whole lot that we should be doing now. Um, some people are still treating with Apivar, and they'll be removing them strips, or some even wait till spring. Regardless if that's what the treatment says you should do, that's what some people will do. But at any rate, they are treating for mites, and I guess that's, that's a big health benefit for the bees. So. So that'll about wrap it up for this week's video, folks. But make sure you tune in next week when I show how I'm going to prepare my Apame colonies for winter. Got a lot of people curious um, how I'm going to get them through winter. Am I going to use the feeders? Um, am I going to do anything special to them as far as their setup? Well, tune in next week and you will see. Um, thanks for taking a few minutes today and, and tuning in. If you have any questions that maybe I can help you with as far as getting your highs ready um, for winter, leave them down below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please take a second and do so. Um, we'll see you next week, folks. Thanks for watching. JC's Bees.